Nick, I know that you've got a million scenarios in your head on how the college football playoff rankings are going to come out on Sunday. The top six to me, I kind of expected it to play out. Any surprise during the ranking show last night? Uh, first off, appreciate you guys having me on. You know, not really yet. With the amount of carnage that we've had, and shoot, it's not over yet. we still got to get through conference championship games. You know, my, I wasn't surprised to see it last night. It looked uh, to me that if Houston, you know, isn't able to beat Cincinnati, which, you know, there, there's a chance. I mean, Cincinnati's been up and down that, that you're going to have Cincy in there. What I'm interested to see is the seeding, and, and I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, if Alabama were to beat Georgia, would they just flip them? Would, would uh, Alabama go to one and Georgia go to three? How, how would that work? So I, I wasn't shocked uh, at this point, and, you know, I've been – Arguing against Cincinnati, you know, being in just because we've seen this movie so many times. Uh, I'm, I'm to the point where I almost want Cincinnati to get in as the four seed and play Georgia so they can lose by a thousand and, and we can just stop doing this. Jake, one of the things I'll give you credit for, you were on the Bulldogs train well before the season began, starting in SEC media days, and you've been spot on your prediction at this point. But you talk about seeing this story before. We've seen it with Georgia. We saw it in, in the national championship. We've seen the SEC championship. There's there's a reason this team has won one natty since 1980. And the question I have is not about their defense, but their offense. If Bryce Young gets going, what gives you confidence that Stetson Bennett and company – are going to be able to keep up with them offensively? Uh, you know, I mean, shoot, right now Alabama, if they can't block Auburn up front, good luck blocking Georgia. <laughs> uh, that, that's a different movie. Um, but, you know, look, Georgia's they've been capable offensively. I mean, you know, you, you look at Stetson, is he flashy? No. But the thing that, that I like about Stetson is his running ability. If you watch, whether it's the Tennessee game, you know, you can go back. He's done a great job on third downs of extending drives with his legs. Uh, his vertical goal, his vertical ball's gotten better. He's been pretty good in the intermediate game. But Georgia's a run the pass team. And I mean, if you look Alabama, you look at A and M, you look at Florida, some teams that were worked their salt on the offensive line. They've struggled to stop the run, especially at the inside linebacker position. And if they don't stop the run against Georgia, the play action to the tight end. Uh, especially the way Brock Bowers is playing right now. I, you know, to me, George has been the most consistent team with the most elite roster. I mean, Alabama has been up and down. One side of the ball will play great while the other side doesn't play good one game. So, you know, I, I keep saying George is like gravity. You know, you, you, you don't know it's there until you're 85 years old and you're hunched over. Uh, it's like in football, you don't know you're, uh, getting beat by 24 by George until you look up and it's the third quarter and you're like, how is it 27 to three? Yeah. What's at stake in your mind with, with Cincinnati in this college football playoff? If they get in, does that further uh, accelerate expansion down the road? If they don't get in, how do the conversations go there? I think Cincinnati and whether they're in or out is, a, is, a, is going to be some interesting takes on the backside of that. Yeah, you know, I, I, look, I think it's going to go to 12. I just, you know, when, when I think about, you know, the, the saddest part about college football, I mean, you know, you could say it's sad, but it's about, everything it's about money and i just know when they look at at the 14 playoff and they're like wow we doubled our profits from the bcs they can if they go to 12 they can triple the already doubled profits uh quote the campaign uh funny will ferrell movie so i think they're going to go to 12 uh really regardless but you know my thing is this i get it that, that i don't like when people say well cincinnati needs to be in well you know what a lot of people need a lot of things uh, it, it, this, it, I'm a firm believer in meritocracy. You look at their strength of schedule, it's 100. Uh, you know, you struggle against Navy. You struggle against Tulsa. You struggle against Tulane. Uh, I'm, I'm just not those people that, well, you know, put them in just to put them in. They're going to get destroyed. When you look at Notre Dame now with without Brian Kelly as the head coach, Ty and I were talking earlier in the show and listening to the committee's comments last night, trying to decipher whether or not they get a spot of things fall right, maybe maybe a Michigan loss, maybe that Alabama loss, maybe if Houston clipped Cincinnati. Uh, can you see a scenario, even if there's some open seats at the table due to losses within the top four, that Notre Dame doesn't get in because of the head coaching change being at the at the center of that? 
You know, with Gary Barta leaving the way, who knows? But I think if, if Bama loses and Oklahoma State loses, they're going to put Notre Dame in. And Brian Kelly has literally just told everybody, if Notre Dame does go in, put all your money on the other side. That's how much he <laughs> believes in Notre Dame. So uh, I, I think they have to have a couple things go right. Um, you know, the committee to me, you know, I, they're human beings. It's almost like a jury. Uh, and, and while, you, you know, you try and be as, as straight and narrow and, and not let, you know, outside stories affect you, there's no way that seeing Brian Kelly leave a playoff contending Notre Dame team for an LSU team that finished 500, uh, I don't know how the committee just look at that and go, well, you know, I mean, that takes a little cachet away from Notre Dame. Now, I don't think Oklahoma State's going to lose. Uh, I, you know, I think Alabama's going to lose. What I'm interested to see is, you know, if Alabama loses uh, and Oklahoma State wins, you know, who's that four seed? Is it going to be Oklahoma State? So uh, th- that's what I'm looking at. But I don't, I don't see a world in which that doesn't have any effect. Will it have a ton of effect? I'm not sure, but it has to have some effect. Jake Crane with us, part of the Jay Boy Show on the Volume Network. Jake, let's talk about some coaching openings right now. Some have been filled. Brian Kelly at USC, Billy Napier at Florida, Lincoln Riley at USC. But the one's open. Let's start closer to home, Oklahoma. I've seen Stoops, but he just got his extension. We've seen different uh, different guys getting mentioned all over the place. If you were Joe Castiglio and the athletics director there, who would be your number one target right now? Man, I'd go throw the bag at you, Freeze. I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand why Virginia Tech didn't do it. And Oklahoma's not part of the SEC yet. See, here's the, here's, here's the thing with you. They're not get, as long as Greg Sankey's the commissioner, and they're not going to do this. This is just who I wanted. You asked me who I would do it, who I would go get. Uh, the problem, as long as Greg Sankey's the SEC commissioner, they're not going to block you from, from coaching in the league but they're going to audit your school every year, but they're not in the league yet. So there's, you know, you, you kind of got a little purgatorical wiggle room, but you know, you look at Venables, uh, you know, when I look at Oklahoma coming into the SEC, I, I think Venables would be a great fit because they, they, they have to improve on defense. And you've already heard that if Brent Venables gets the job, there's a great chance that Jeff Levy, the OC at Ole Miss, who, you know, if that's what you want to call him with, with Wayne Kiffin, uh, would go be the offensive coordinator there. Uh, I think that would be a great a great mix. Uh, Jeff Levy, you know, walking through the door, realizing a Brent Venables defense, uh, you only have to score 27 points as opposed to, you know, scoring 40 at Ole Miss typically every other week to win. Uh, I'm sure he'd like that. Uh, but, no, uh, I think Venables would be a great hire. Stoops, you know, I was very interested to see what happened with Mark since his brother was the interim. Mm-hmm. Uh, congrats to Mark and to Kentucky. A uh, very smart move by Kentucky. Uh, but look, I, I think Brent Venables is a guy you really gotta you really gotta look at. But man, Hugh Freeze would be a problem in Oklahoma. What about Notre Dame? Luke Fickle, Matt Campbell, those are kind of the two big names that get mentioned. Do you have one that that doesn't necessarily land on the radar, kind of like with Freeze at Oklahoma? No, you know, I mean Marcus Freeman would be a guy that that if they kept, you know, would would be a surprise. I think he's ready. Uh, what I'm interested to see is, you know, Luke Fickle said there's only two jobs that that he would leave Cincinnati for: Ohio State, and unless Ryan Day goes to the Bears, he ain't getting that. And Notre Dame. So if Luke Fickle goes to Notre Dame, I think you see Marcus Freeman go to Cincinnati. Uh, Notre Dame. Oh, can it only pull from a certain pool of coaches. You know, they can't go out there and, and you know, take a, a Hugh Freeze or, or somebody like that. So I think it's going to be Luke Fickle or Matt Campbell, like you're mentioning. I would lean Luke Fickle. You know, a name that's polarizing in, in our listing area is Gus Malzahn, who's at Central Florida, but has SEC experience, obviously, uh, at, at Auburn. W- would he be a name or a fit that, that you think you could see, uh, particularly with like Oklahoma, you know, needing someone to lead them into the SEC? Is there a fit anywhere on this uh, this radar right now that you see Gus Malzahn fitting in? Well, if they, if they just want to run zone read and inside zone every play and have a pop-up book <laughs> passing game, I guess you could. Um <laughs> And, and no, look, hey, Gus Malzahn, to me, um, he did a good job at Auburn. Uh, you know, he was able to beat Bama a couple times. You got destroyed by Georgia. You got destroyed by LSU. You never sniffed the playoff. You didn't win the division outside of your first year because Nick Marshall closed his eyes and threw a Hail Mary. And then the kick six, we all know, 
to me, I, I think Gus Malzahn is one of the most overrated coaches in the country and has been uh, for a while. I'm interested to see how it goes at UCF. But in this coaching world, who knows um, where, where they may end up. I mean, do I think Gus would do a bad job at Oklahoma? No. Would he beat anybody worth his salt because his offense still hadn't evolved? I'm watching UCF, and it's the same thing. Zone read, inside zone, elementary passing game with really no vertical threat. I don't know how you win consistently and beat top top level teams outside of you know the Vandies and and because look, you look at the West now. I mean, just the West. I, I mean, Brian Kelly, Lane Kiffin, Sam Pittman, Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher, Gus Malzahn isn't those guys, and he can't recruit that way. His biggest problem at Auburn, he didn't sign a high school offensive tackle from 2017 to 2021. He's not a good recruiter. He's not super personable, and he's not socially able to compete with Kirby and them. So uh, if they did that, I think that'd be a big mistake, in my opinion. Jake, what's your thoughts on the money we're seeing now with these head coaches? We went over the top 10 paid head coaches, and of course, Lincoln Riley's deal plus $10 million. You know at some point, Alabama's not going to sit around and let Nick Saban be uh, no. underpaid by scale, uh, according to the rest of the college football world. Trees don't grow to the sky, but it, it never seems to end in college football. Your thoughts on the, the compensation packages we're seeing on, on extensions, renewals, and new hires in college football? Well, you, you know, Little Wayne had a great saying, the rich get richer, my name should be Richard. And that's, that's about how it is in college football right now. It's one of the few professions where salaries are going up. I mean, it's, inflation's going up, but coaching salaries are going up. Because, I mean, you know, look, it, it's, it's such a nuclear arms race, now, and it's starting to bleed all through college football. We've seen it in the SEC, uh, but it, again, you know, the amount of money that is being made in college football, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, you look, you look at the ratings right now, the amount of revenue that's coming in, and you bring up Nick Saban. I mean, he's got a clause in his contract where he's got to basically be the highest paid guy, and if it's going at this, if it keeps going at this rate in the next five years, He'll own a third of the state of Alabama and half the natural resources in the state. So, you know, I'm, I'm just wondering when he's going to open a, a natural gas pipeline from Tuscaloosa uh, to New Orleans or something like that. I don't see it slowing down either. It's just part of it. And the people love what the people love. Jake, before we let you go, I heard it yesterday. Some of our listeners had uh, Lou Holtz, former Razorback head coach, and uh, <laughs> a lot of people know him. Give us your Lou Holtz impression before we let you go. Oh, man, you put me on the spot. That's hilarious. Uh, you, I was like, you know, it's the University of Notre Dame. And there's many things the University of Notre Dame fighting Irish believe in. What? The University of Notre Dame fighting Irish, the best school in the history of all schools. I was at Arkansas. I called the big. I will pick Stewie. I will pick Stewie. I will pick Stewie. But when you're in that end zone and you're looking up at touchdown Jesus, you know it's the University of Notre Dame fight Irish all the way. <laughs> there you go, fellas. Uh, dude, on the spot, and you nailed it. Jake Crane, uh, the J-Boy Show on the Volume Network. If you haven't listened to his podcast or watching it on YouTube, you're missing out. Jake, we really appreciate the time this morning and uh, look forward to hopefully what looks to be a good game on Saturday. Definitely, and you got to come back down and get on the show, bro. Anytime, man, anytime. Good stuff from, uh, all right, all right, see ya. Good stuff from Jake. It's Thanksgiving, and we all know what that means. Football. And nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet Online has you covered for all the holiday season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this Thanksgiving. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V to receive your bonus. And it's not not just football. BetOnline has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports.